Welcome back. Let's get back into the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go to St. Luke chapter 12, beginning at verse 32. St. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. We're going to be continuing with a series called The Gospel of the Kingdom. It's for the 12 tribes of Israel. The gospel of the kingdom is for the 12 tribes of Israel. You got your scriptures? St. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. It's two foundational scriptures. And then we're going to go to the book of Acts. All right, so chapter 12, verse 32 says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. Well, to be a shepherd, you got to have flock. So he's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So what is he saying? The kingdom of heaven is for the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah. That's what the scripture says he, he is, who he is. And he come to save Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, all 12 tribes, but especially the tribe of Judah, because that's the tribe that he come from. Verse. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Acts Chapter 1, verse 6. I hope you have your scriptures with you. It says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? This is after the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> the, depart, the disciples who are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah, they called Jews. That people said the Jews forsook Jesus. Some of them did, but not all of them. Otherwise, he would not have had any disciples. The disciples are Jews. So people take the scriptures out of context all the time because they they just take them out of context. They think they know what they're talking about, but they're taking the scriptures out of context. Some of the Jews believed and some of them didn't. The ones that believed are called disciples. So these are the ones that's talking to him. Uh, when, they, when he had rose, he said, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom of, to Israel? Because Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, they were under Roman occupation in Jerusalem. The land wasn't called Israel then. It was just Jerusalem. But they were under Roman occupation. The southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. So they're asking him, are you going to restore the kingdom back to Israel? Because they're under Rome. They're being oppressed. Rome is over them. The ruling class people. The same people that's ruling the earth today. Rome and the Americas. The ruling class people. The Japhet Gentiles. They're ruling the earth. Jesus said, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Well, the times of the Gentiles won't be fulfilled until the Lord. And so until then, Jerusalem is going to be trodden down by the Gentiles. So the people over in the land called the nation of Israel, they are not. God's chosen people, God's chosen people are scattered to the four winds. All of the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered. But what we're trying to show here is that the kingdom of heaven is for the 12 tribes of Israel. God's chosen people. People don't like to talk about God's chosen people as if they don't exist. It's all throughout the scriptures, but they act like, oh, it's about Christians now. Jesus the Messiah, the Savior of the 12 tribes of Israel, did not come to start a religion. He didn't come to start any religion. He didn't come to start Christianity. Christianity is a religion. 
Although Christian is mentioned in the scripture, it was a derogatory term. The disciples never called themselves Christians. The scripture said they were called Christians. That means somebody else called them Christian. <laughs> but they didn't call themselves Christian. It was a derogatory term, like somebody calling you nigger. It's a derogatory term. Them, them Christians, them niggers. That's exactly what it was. So they never called themselves Christian. Jesus didn't come to establish a religion. He didn't come to establish Christianity. And so he, that's why he said, many going to come in my name and deceive many. Christianity, Christians, is a form of the name of Christ. It's come in the name of Christ, and it has deceived many. People think, oh, Christian, Christianity. Yeah, it's good. No, it's not. That's anti-Christ. <laughs> Christianity is anti-Christ. It goes against the word of God. Jesus said, many will come in my name and deceive many. Do not be deceived. <laughs> Christianity is a strong delusion. <laughs> the scripture talks about a strong delusion. That's what Christianity is. It's a, it sounds good, but that's how the devil is. He make everything sound good. Just because it sound good don't mean it's good. <laughs> All right, now we're getting into the meat. Let's go to Acts chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Acts chapter 11. All right, you got your scriptures. Verse 1. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. All right. So the apostles are the original disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. He chose 12. Judas got deceived by the devil and, and betrayed Christ. He, Jesus said, one of y'all, have I not chosen you 12 and one of you is the devil? So Judas killed himself. And so they picked another apostle. So they're talking about the, 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 the disciples that Jesus ordained the, the, as apostles. He said the apostles and brethren, disciples, who are also Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. Now when I say Hebrew Israelites, Hebrew is the language they spoke. Abraham was a Hebrew. That's the language he spoke. So all the people of Abraham are Hebrews. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael was of the bondwoman, Hagar. Got ahead of God. God said, no, that ain't the one. You and Sarah are going to have a baby. Him and Sarah had a baby, and they called him Isaac. Isaac is the son of the promise. God made a promise to Abraham and to his seed forever. But it's not for Ishmael, it's for Isaac. Isaac is the promised seed, not Ishmael. And then Ish, Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. They were twins. And Esau was born first. He came out hairy and red like a garment. And they didn't describe how Jacob looked because he looked just like everybody else in the family. <laughs> Esau was different. Esau sold his birthright. Jacob received the blessing from his father, Isaac. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The scripture said God loved Jacob but hated Esau. That means God loved Israel. Esau is also Edom, Edomites, Edomia. Now they're in the world, but people don't talk about them as if they don't exist. That's by design. <laughs> they don't want you to know that they exist. And they talk about Israel, but everybody think that the people over in the land called the nation of Israel, Jewish people, that they're Israel. Well, Jewish means like. It, that's why they call themselves Jewish. They know that they are not Jews of the scripture. They're not biblical Hebrew Israelites of the scripture. They're not of the tribe of Judah. That's where Jews come from, from the tribe of Judah. It's short for Judah. Those people are not from the tribe of Judah. So they call themselves Jewish. They are Ashkenaz, Khazarians, Japheth Gentiles, and Edomites. And they've taken over that land over there by fraud and deceit. Because all of the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered. 
especially the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. We're scattered to the four corners of the earth. And so we wasn't there, so they took over the land. That's why Jesus said Jerusalem will be trotten down of the Gentiles. So that's who's over there, Gentiles. They've taken over the land by fraud and deceit. And since 1948, everyone thinks that that's God's chosen people. God's chosen people are scattered to the four winds. So these are the apostles, the Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. Jacob had 12 sons. They became the 12 tribes of Israel. People act like it's just Jew. It's 12 tribes of Israel. Judah is of the southern kingdom. Judah and Benjamin. And they were called Jews. Not all of Israel is called Jews. Only the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. The northern kingdom of Israel was not called Jews. They were called Israel or Ephraim. Or sometimes Joseph. But when they sinned, they were no longer referred to as Israel. They were referred to as Gentiles. So you got to understand, Israel, to 12 tribes, was divided into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was 10 tribes. The southern kingdom was 2 tribes. So in the New Testament, they talk about both kingdoms. But if you don't understand the scriptures and study the scriptures... You take the scriptures out of context. The scriptures are only written for and about the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not written to everybody else in the whole wide world. Everybody else in the whole wide world have confiscated the scriptures to try to make the scriptures apply to them by taking them out of context. That's where Christianity comes in. Christianity is about humanity. It's about everybody. It's that Jesus come to save everybody. It, it's like there's Christians and then there's Jews. That's divide. That's division. Jesus said a house divided cannot stand. He's not coming back for Christians and for Jews. He ain't got nothing to do with Christianity. <laughs> He's coming back for his people. The 12 tribes of Israel, especially the tribe of Judah, because that's the tribe that he come from. So people don't understand the scriptures. They take the scriptures out of context and try to make the scriptures apply to everybody, but it only applies to the 12 tribes of Israel. That's why people are confused and take the scriptures out of context, and they don't understand that Israel is 12 tribes. It's a 12-member nation, but it's two kingdoms. And so when you get to the New Testament, it's talking about the two kingdoms. It talks about Jews. That's the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. And then it talks about the Gentiles. It's talking about the ten tribes of the northern kingdom that are scattered. They were also referred to as Jew, I mean Greeks. They were also referred to as uh, uncircumcision. And at whatever location where they're living. So all the people that they're talk, ministering to are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. The southern kingdom in the northern kingdom. But when they're talking about the Gentiles, they're talking specifically about the northern kingdom. And so that's what has, had happened. Peter had just finished ministering to Cornelius. <laughs> People don't understand. And they think, oh, see, Cornelius got saved in his house. They Gentile. So this is for everybody in the whole wide world, taking the scriptures out of context. Cornelius is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the northern kingdom. The ten tribes that were scattered. They were scattered abroad in this area. And that's who Peter them ministry. That's why Peter said, we don't eat unclean stuff. Well, I never ate unclean stuff when the Lord was telling them, eat Peter, kill and eat. He said, no, Lord, I ain't never ate nothing unclean. <laughs> but Peter like, don't, if I, the Lord said, if I call it clean, don't you call it unclean. So Peter had just finished ministering to Cornelius in his household, who are Gentile, who are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the uh, ten tribes of the northern kingdom. That's who they are. And they got saved. They so verse 1 again, it says, And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God, meaning they, they heard the word of God. Let's put God in context. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who God is. Because people hear God and they like, oh, God is the God of everybody. No, 
He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You got to put it in context because people take God out of context. They take the scriptures out of context. Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. People say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. As soon as you say he's the Savior of Israel, no, he's the, he, he's, he saved everybody. It's about humanity. That's why all these 501c3 corporations, pastors and preachers of the Antichrist church system preach humanism. It's about everybody. Everybody can get saved. It's about everybody. <laughs> They preach humanism. It's not about everybody. It's about God's chosen people from Genesis to Revelation. That's what it's about. But if you take the scriptures out of context, you can say that. So that's why Jesus said, many going to come in my name. He said, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? And do I, I, I didn't know. He's going to say, I don't know you. <laughs> I, have, I don't even know who you are. Well, who, what, what you talking about? I come to only save my people, Israel. Then we do this in your name and do that. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. Jesus only come to save his people from their, their sin, who are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, all 12 tribes, but especially the tribe of Judah. They don't understand that the 10 tribes of the northern kingdom are the Gentiles that's being talked about. So the apostles... The, and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles, the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel that are scattered. They're called Gentiles because they disobeyed the word of God and the Lord scattered them among the Japheth Gentiles. They were no longer referred to as Israel. They are referred to as Gentiles. The Gentiles had received the word of God. The word of God is to God's chosen people. God spoke to Abraham. He made a covenant with Abraham and to his seed. That's why he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So you got to say all that to keep it in, in context because people think it, the scripture is just for everybody. It's not. <laughs> so the Gentiles received the word of God. That means they believe what the word of God said and they obeyed it and they did what it said. Verse 2, and when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. So Peter is back in Jerusalem now and the other brothers and sisters that's in Christ of the circumcision that's, a, that's disciples that believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. They, they, they want to hold on to the tradition of men. They want to hold on to certain aspects of the law by, by taking it out of context. So it says, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. So they're talking about the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin called Jews. They're the ones of the circumcision. Peter is also of the circumcision. The Jews, they continue to obey the word of God, the law. And so when they mention circumcision, they're talking about the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. But you got to understand the context of what they're saying. Peter is, is a circumcision also. <laughs> but what they mean by this word circumcision is that they taking the scriptures out of context and they're unbelieving. And so they're, they're, they're holding to a a doctrine because the Gentiles had stopped practicing circumcision. That's why they call them the uncircumcision. And so they're talking about circumcision because these people wanted all the Gentiles not to just believe, but no, they had to be circumcised also. So that's why they're bringing out this point. They that were of the circumcision contended with him, contended with Peter. That means they fought against him. What Peter was saying, they're like, no, nah, no, nah, it's this. In the same way it is today, people are contending with the scriptures because some people take the scriptures out of context. That's why the scriptures say we have to study to show ourselves approve of God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God, the word of truth. And so these people, they wasn't dividing the word of truth. They wasn't rightly dividing the word of God. 
They were taking the scriptures out of context. That's why they was contending with Peter. The same way people are contending with me. I'm saying that Israel is two kingdoms. There's 12 tribes, but two kingdoms. In the southern kingdom, Judah and Benjamin are Jews. The northern kingdom, the 10 tribes, were called Israel, but when they sent to as Israel, they were referred to as Gentile. But people that contend with me, supposed to be believers, <laughs> supposed to be Hebrew Israelites, <laughs> but they said, no, Jesus come to save everybody. The Gentile is everybody else in the whole wide world. That's taking the scriptures out of context. So these non-believers contend with Peter. Verse 3, saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and did it eat with them. <laughs> so they, they're finding fault. And so when you don't understand the scriptures and somebody say something different than what you're used to, you get mad, you get offended. All you got to do is go study the scriptures. The scripture will back itself up. But they didn't have faith. And see, that's the thing that Israel has to understand. All 12 tribes. And that's what the scripture talks about. There's an Israel that believe, and then there's an Israel that don't believe. All 12 tribes. Even among the southern kingdom of J Judah and Benjamin called Jews. There's Jews that believe and Jews that don't believe. So when the scripture said, Jesus came unto his own, Talking about the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, who are Jews, and his own received him not. Some of them didn't believe. And then it goes on to say, but as many as did believe, still talking about the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, called Jew, as many of them did believe, they became the sons of God. But people take that scripture out of context and say, see, it said the Jews believed him not. <laughs> Yeah, but it goes on to say, but the ones that did, they became the sons of God. People think that they're not talking about the Jews anymore, that they're talking about somebody else. That's how people take the scriptures out of context. And then they try to apply it to anything and everything. And that's what these people are doing with Peter. And thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and did eat with them. And so... Maybe they didn't realize that they were they were uh, <laughs> the ten tribes. I'm sure they knew. Peter, them, all of the Jews knew who the ten tribes were. We just, in this dispensation, we don't know. We don't even know that we're Jews. <laughs> because we've been scattered. But they, know who, they knew who the ten tribes of the northern kingdom were. And so they knew who the uncircumcised people are. They knew that they're Israelites. And they're telling Peter, you went in unto these people, the ten tribes of the northern kingdom, and you ate with them. And you know, they're not serving the Lord. <laughs> That's why we call them uncircumcised. They stopped circumcising. And so you went in and you ate with them. <laughs> so they finding fault with what Peter did. Now, doesn't matter that they believe, that they, they filled with the Holy Ghost. They just finding fault that Peter sat with them and ate with them. Verse 4, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying. So Peter had to break it down <laughs> so that they could understand what had happened. <laughs> so he rehearsed it with them. He started from the beginning so that they could get an understanding. The scripture said, all that I get and get an understanding. Verse 5. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended, as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even unto me. So Peter began by explaining that he was in Joppa. He seen a vision. It was coming down from heaven. It was a great sheet. By four corners. <laughs> so he's describing what he saw in the vision. Verse 6. Upon the rich, when I had fastened my eyes, I considered and saw four-feeted beasts of the earth, 
and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And he goes on and describes all the things that he saw in the vision on the sheep. Four-feeted beasts of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and fowls of the air. Verse 7, And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. <laughs> so Peter continued to tell him, And then I heard this voice telling me, Arise and eat, Peter. <laughs> Verse 8, But I said, No, not so, Lord, for nothing coming or unclean at, at any time entered into my mouth. So Peter was contending with the Lord. Like, no, hold up, wait a minute. No, I, I'm not eating that. <laughs> no, Lord, I, I ain't never ate anything that's unclean. Nothing un common or unclean that ever entered into my mouth. And I'm not about to start right now. <laughs> Verse 9, But the voice answered me again from heaven, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. <laughs> so Peter, <laughs> fighting with God, contending with the Lord. And the Lord said, look, what, what, what God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has cleansed, that call, thou, that call not thou common. Don't you, if I call it clean, then don't you call it not clean or, or, or common. <laughs> You, you're not big enough to fight with me. You better agree with me. <laughs> Verse 10, And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. So it had to be done three times, because Peter was continuing to fight with the Lord. He had the Lord three times. Jesus had to ask him three times, Do you believe? Do you, do you, do you believe me, Peter? Will you follow me? Follow me, Peter. <laughs> and so Jesus had to ask him three times for him to get it. And so the Lord had to do this for him three times so that he can understand, look, this is the Lord talking to you. You need to do what I'm telling you to do. So it was done three times. He's like, oh, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> All right, I, I'll do it. Verse 11, and behold, immediately. There were three men already come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And so after he had this confrontation with the Lord in the vision, three men came looking for Peter from Caesarea. <laughs> Verse 12, And the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. So Peter is explaining what had happened when these three people showed up. He said, the Spirit told me to go with them, <laughs> the Spirit of God. And so I didn't doubt anything after that. I said, okay, I'll go with you. The brethren with him to go to uh, Cornelius' house. Again, Cornelius is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the ten tribes that scattered. The scripture says that he was a just man, a devout man, and he prayed. So though the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel are scattered, some still believe and worship the Lord. Not all of them were, you know, still serving devils. Some of them were still trying to serve the Lord. And the scripture says that his prayers had come up for a memorial before God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's who God is. If he wasn't an Israelite, he wouldn't even be praying. And his prayers wouldn't be going up to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The man is an Israelite of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom, Cornelius. Verse 13 and she, he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is And so when uh, Cornelius was having this vision, talking to the angel, this is what the angel said unto him. Send for Peter. He's in Joppa. <laughs> He's at a man's house called Simon. Verse 14, who shall tell thee words whereby thou shalt, thou and all thy house shall be saved. 
So the angel was telling Cornelius, this is what's going to happen when he gets here. He's going to tell you. He's going to talk to you about the Lord. <laughs> and you and all your house is going to be saved. So what this scripture, what these things represent is the Lord making provision for the ten tribes of the northern kingdom for salvation for them. So that's what people don't understand. Jesus said if one sheep is lost, he's going to leave the 90 and 9 to go after that one sheep that's lost. That's what the ten tribes of the northern kingdom represent. They're that lost sheep. Jesus said, I have other sheep not of this fold. They're not of the tribe of Judah. They're not of the southern kingdom. They're the ten tribes of the northern kingdom. And so that's, that's who these people represent. But people take the scriptures out of context and like, oh, it's for everybody else in the whole wide world. That's just a lot of baloney. That's a lie. Straight from the pit of hell. And that's what the devil does to deceive people. You mix just a little bit of a lie with the truth is a lie. That's why Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. Just a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. The whole lump just a lie. So what people are saying is the, the world, the Christianity, and all the rest of the religion, they said that Jesus, he didn't just come for the Jews, he come for everybody. And Jesus said, a house divided cannot stand. He said, I'm building my church. He, he didn't come to start a, a Christian church and a, and a church with the Jews, and the, but to get over that, they said, oh, Jesus, he, he ain't with the Jews no more. He with the Christian. All that is nonsense. That's stupid. It doesn't make sense. That's not what the scripture said. It, whatever they're saying can't even be backed up by the scriptures at all. God has not forsaken his people. That's what the scripture has said. <laughs> so people come up with all this nonsense about Christianity and it just doesn't hold water. It got holes in the bucket. <laughs> and as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. And as on us at the beginning. <laughs> so Peter was continuing to explain what was happening. He said, I was speaking to them that about salvation. If they, they believe that God will save them from the, their sins. If they repent, that should, repentance should be preached unto them. And if they believe, they, they, they'll be saved. So they believe, and then the Holy Ghost fell on them, and they started speaking in tongues. <laughs> so Peter is explaining to them what happened. He's like, I didn't do anything. I was just preaching the gospel. <laughs> that Jesus died, he rose again on the third day. And if you believe, then you should be saved. And they believed it, and they got saved. They got born again. They got filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them and as, as on us at the beginning. That's what happened. <laughs> so the Lord saved them. <laughs> Verse 16. Then, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so Peter said, I remember what, what John the Baptist had said. <laughs> That we should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. So this is this, the northern kingdom of the uh, of the ten tribes of Israel coming into the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus said men will come from the north, south, east, and west, sit down in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be cast out. Meaning it's primarily the, 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 the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin because they stiff-necked and hard-hearted. A lot of us believe, but a lot of us don't. A lot of us are stiff-necked and hard-hearted, telling you that you are a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, and you were scattered <laughs> in that Atlantic slave trade. We're scattered to the four corners of the earth everywhere. That's what the scripture said was going to happen to us. And that, No, nah, that's not me. You were scattered, but that's not you. So you don't believe the word. You're stiff-necked and you're hard-hearted. Just like People resisted, the, the, the Jews, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin resisted Stephen. Didn't want to hear what he was saying, stoned him to death. We're still doing the same thing today. They didn't want to hear Peter. That's the people that's called a circumcision, but they're non-believers. So I was saying earlier, Israel, 12 tribes, 
We got to have faith. Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. You don't get into the kingdom of heaven. Israel, just for being of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin called Jew. You don't get in the kingdom of heaven just for being a Jew or of the 12 tribes. You have to have faith and you have to believe. If you don't have faith and you don't believe, Jesus said you're going to die in your sin. So that's what you have to understand about the 12 tribes. We don't make it into the kingdom of heaven just by being the 12 tribes, just by being chosen. We still have to believe the gospel of the kingdom. And so that's what's going on. Our names have been written in the book of life, but if we don't believe, our names can be blotted out. Otherwise, how can it be blotted out if it's not already written in the book of life? God has a chosen people, and it's us. It's the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 17, For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? <laughs> so Peter further explains himself. He said, for as much then as God, again, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He gave them the like gift. Who is them? The, the, southern, the northern kingdom of the ten tribes of Israel that are scattered, that are called Gentiles. He gave them the like gift as he did unto us. Who is us? The southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin called Jews, who believed. <laughs> he said, you got to break it down. It's not, not just because you're a Jew, not just because you're the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, but you believe. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What, 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 what was I that I could withstand God? So that's, that's how you make it into the kingdom of heaven. All 12 tribes, we have to believe the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus came for Israel. That's why he came. He died. He gave his life for Israel as the sacrificial land, as the Passover. The same way we had the Passover in Egypt, Jesus is our Passover lamb. He shed his blood for Israel. He rose again on the third day. He seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for Israel. All 12 tribes that believe the gospel of the kingdom. And he's coming back. But Israel, his chosen people, that's who he's coming back for. He said, what was I, I could do is withstand God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What I was going to say to God, no, they can't be saved. They, they still, the Gentiles, they, 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 <laughs> they turn their back so you can't save them. I can't fight God and tell God not to save them. He said he was going to save them, so he saved them. <laughs> and so that's what happened. So Peter is explaining himself about what happened to the ten tribes of the northern kingdom at Cornelius' house. How they got saved. How they got born again. He's like, what am I not to save them? <laughs> I can't fight against God. I'm, I'm not big enough to fight against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said that they could be saved, so they got saved. Verse 18. When they heard these things, they held their peace. And glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. So after Peter had finished speaking to all the other apostles and disciples that was listening, they held their peace and they was well, say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody asked the question. Then hath God also to the Gentile. Again, the Gentiles are the ten tribes. Of the northern kingdom that had sinned against the Lord, and the Lord scattered them among the Japhet Gentiles. Go read Hosea 8 and 8. That's who the Gentiles are. They were no longer referred to as Israel or Ephraim, they were referred to as Gentile. Had God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, granted repentance of life to the Gentiles? The answer is yes. And so we're going to get into it further on down about what Paul was preaching. Let's finish up verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word of, of God to none but unto the Jews only. 
So after the death of Stephen, a lot of the disciples that believed the gospel of the kingdom, they were disciples. They wasn't Christians. They were scattered abroad because of the persecution. Because Saul, he, he had his letter to go out and just kill all the believers, all the Jews that believed that Jesus was the Messiah. That was the persecution. They, they start traveling. They went to Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch preaching the word of God but only to the Jews only. And they point out Jews only because that's the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. And so this is, the, the gospel is for all 12 tribes. But these people, they wasn't sent to preach to the 10 tribes of the northern kingdom. That's why the Lord called Paul to do that. That's who he's going to preach to. But that's it for today. We're going to stop there and we're going to pick it up next time. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Shalom.